Well, I got something by UPS here a while ago today, and it should be a shortwave receiver. We'll unbox it here. It should be a realistic uh, DX160. So we'll see if it survived the trip here. Got it off of eBay. I have to forgive my audio. I don't have the external mic hooked up right now. Just the internal mic to the camera. So I'm trying to talk a little louder. But uh, yeah, looks like it's packaged fairly well here. Yeah, this is a radio I always wanted since uh, 1976 when I was studying for my ham radio license. <clears throat> I had this receiver in mind at Radio Shack to start out with when I got my novice license and all that. Well, my Elmer at the time ended up talking me out of that, which later I found out that was a good thing he did because I ended up going with a Drake TR4CW which was much better suited for ham radio use, full transceiver and much higher quality. But over all these years I've never got to play with the DX160 that I had in my heart at the time on getting. So finally after all these years I decided there's a bunch of used ones on eBay. I'm going to give it a try and uh, just play around with the radio a little bit and get to see how that radio would have worked out and a lot of people really still like these radios so I think uh, I'll have a lot of fun with it here if it works out. It does, did come with external speaker here. Looks like that's in good shape. And it is really packaged well so the guy that shipped it knew how to package it so it wouldn't get damaged. A good bubble wrap there. There it is. Looks like it's in good shape. Fairly heavy radio. It's like a quality built radio there, actually. So we'll get it on the uh, desktop, take a look at it. All right, it. it's a little bit later here, and I've got the DX160 set up on the workbench. And I just plugged it in, hooked an antenna up, and gonna try to power it up, see if everything comes to life here. And I did angle it up in the air just a little bit. It's just sitting on a uh, spray can, paint uh, can top there, just to kind of angle it up a little. And first of all, I want to say thanks to Davy Jones there, KB3YJO. Thanks uh, for inspiring me to get this radio. Um, Dave has a DX150, and I saw it in his shack photo there on QRZ, and uh, got me thinking about the radio that I had always wanted from years back. And I started looking around, and uh, and I finally found one at a decent price on eBay. So, not sure what shape it's in yet. I'll probably have to do a little bit of work to it, some cleanup, and and uh, I may do some modifications later. But uh, let's see if it powers up here. Okay, lights up. It's a good sign. Here's some CW here. It's a BFO pitch. I do notice some of the controls are just a little sticky. You can tell it hasn't been used in probably many years it's been sitting. But uh, let's see, where am I at here? Here's the main tuning, and I'm on band D. So I am on, looks like in the 40 meter band here right now. And hearing some CW, so that's a good sign. Got the antenna trim here which peaks the antenna. 
And a little bit of drift there, sounds like. BFO. Now here's the band spread tuning, which is like a real fine tuning. some kind of contest here on 40 meter sideband. I notice the radio ha has to stabilize a little once it's powered up and I've heard that about these where uh, you do need to let them sit and run for a little while and then they kind of stabilize. And there's WWV at 5 megahertz. This is uh, about 9 o'clock in the evening here. Signal's got a lot of quick fade on it. AF gain is the volume control. Let's tune up the band a little. And then on the other side of the equation, I used to think, um, my lord, commercial broadcast around six megahertz. Sounds like Arnie Coro there. No. Havana, Cuba radio. There's a Canadian time signal. It's not a real hi-fi sounding uh, radio, it's more designed for communications use, so that's how it was designed, but it, uh, it doesn't have any low response, it's kind of a just a strictly communications type sound. I think uh, there are some modifications for that, and I'm going to play around with that, probably changing some ca capacitors uh, later. Now I'm on band C, which is uh, 1.55 megahertz to 4.5 megahertz. In the green scale here. CHU. sideband so to receive sideband flip the switch from AM to single sideband mode here and use your BFO to zero the signal in this is on uh, 80 meters here and you can tune the fine tune you can set the dial to each ham band and then use your fine tuning uh, band spread here for uh, fine tuning. And that's how you receive CW2 in this mode and using the BFO. And the antenna trim will peak the signal. And RF gain, you can kind of use that as a volume control. It's best to turn the AF gain or the volume control up 
a ways and then use your RF gain kind of as your volume control and uh, that'll help eliminate some of that background noise on the noisier HF frequencies. Now the AVC, automatic volume control, either fast or slow. I prefer it on slow most of the time for listening to single sideband. Um, that helps to eliminate some of that background noise also. And uh, receive or operate switch as receiver standby. And what that was designed for, if you have a separate transmitter you want to use, when you want to transmit, you put that into standby, it silences, mutes the receiver. Back to receive to receive there. And then you have the ANL, which is the automatic noise limiter. Usually uh, I have that off, but if I have some interference uh, that that helps cut down on, that's what that's made for, eliminating some electrical and ignition type noises, that type of thing. Here we have somebody on uh, 75 meter AM on 3885 kilohertz. And I kind of like to monitor the AM stations up there. Some of them have really nice sounding audio running uh, some vintage equipment, vintage gear on 3885 so kilohertz. Basically this radio covers from 150 kilohertz up through the AM broadcast band and the shirtwave and amateur radio HF bands all the way up to 30 megahertz. And right now the upper frequencies here on band E are kind of dead at this time of night so I wasn't hearing much there. No need to show you that. Here's the AM broadcast band, the blue scale here. Band B. I just have it on a local station here right now in town. And this is where when you're listening to a local strong AM station like this, that's where the RF gain really comes in handy. If I have this fully clockwise, the meter is just pegged out and it's distorted somewhat <coughs> because the signal is overloading the receiver. So if I back the RF gain off and just bring the AF gain up a little, Use the RF gain as the volume. That works well. Out of AM stations, as there should be. Static at the low end from my light up here. <clears throat> so anyhow, it appears to be working. Uh, I'll probably want to do an alignment to it. Uh, procedures online for that. So I'm going to take the cover off now. Let's take a look inside, see what the condition looks like. And here's what the back looks like. Basically, on the left there, the antenna connections, and your power in the middle, fuse holder, and a speaker jack, and then connections for DC power, and the standby switch. Okay, removing several screws here. Got the top part off. And there we go. Take a look inside here. 
Well, it looks a little dusty in here. It hasn't been touched in a long time, so it's kind of dirty. It does need a cleaning. So I'm going to have to go through that. Like I say, I'll probably want to do an alignment on it. And clean the controls. I need to take the bottom side off next, I guess, to get at the controls. But I want to clean all my potentiometers. And other than that, it looks like it's all intact. I don't see any any mods offhand, anything that looks like it's been tampered with or modified. So, and I may want to replace the electrolytic capacitors there also. have to think about that, I guess. So you can see a little bit of dirt and grime in there. And everything looks intact. There's the loop antenna for the AM broadcast band and possibly the low lower frequencies below that too. I don't remember offhand tuning section all right there we have it you can see the bottom side of the PC boards and they look pretty clean I don't see anything offhand that looks like it's been changed or modified or any soldering uh, areas that look like they've been resoldered or anything so that's good and this is my potentiometers I'm going to have to spray clean. And this is the tuning section. Uh, tuning for each band is done with th these coils. There's some for each band. This is the band switch. So I'm probably going to do a little uh, realignment there when I print out the uh, manual on it, uh, the service manual. And I do like the heavy uh, weight on the tuning, on the back of the tuning here. That's nice, that heavy weight it gives it a good feel when you're tuning the frequencies there I like that so that's good I guess uh, everything looks to be in pretty good shape here so that's kind of what the underside looks like on these radios so there you have it just kind of a quick peek at the DX160 so the DX160 here was made uh, approximately 1975 to 1980 right in there before that was the DX150 and that one was made between about 1969 and 1975 right in there that time period the 160 what it included was the low frequency band between 150 kilohertz and 400 kilohertz a navigational aid band so they added that band and an extra band to the DX160 radios were made by GRE a company called GRE is uh, what I've been told in Japan for Radio Shack. So, hope you enjoyed taking a look at the radio with me. My uh, unboxing and checking it out here. I'll see what I can do for mods and cleaning it up and all that, making it look good. And we'll see if I do another video later. I'm not sure if I'll do another one yet or not on this. But anyhow, I thought you might get a little kick out of uh, seeing the radio here. And uh, thanks for watching the videos. I know I get a lot of messages and emails, comments, and all that from all of you. And I really appreciate it. And that uh, just makes me want to keep doing the videos. So I'll keep at it here, doing things that I think uh, some of you might be interested in. So, and thanks again, Dave Jones, for inspiring me to buy this radio. So 7-3 for now. And keep watching. WD0AKX. So this radio was uh, mainly designed for SWLs, but uh, hams uh, used them too, and uh, that's, uh, uh, yeah, it's it's out there. So the DX160 uh, is a radio that covers uh, the whole spectrum of, uh, of uh, all that stuff out there. Retake. So the DX150 was made before the 160, the, well, of course it was. <laughs> all right. Now I uh, forgot what I was going to say, so let's back this thing up. So the underside looks pretty good here, ah, clean shape, uh, sharp point there. Let's start this over. No, it wasn't voltage, it's not plugged in. So anyhow, I want to thank all of you for watching, and uh, I don't know. Um, let's see here. Let's retake this.